Hi everyone, welcome to Heart of Philly and today we are, we are with Dr. Charlie Seltzer and um, with Limitless Longevity and that is the name of his practice. So hi Charlie, how you doing? I'm great, thanks for having me, I Th appreciate it. Thanks for having us here because I know that you, um, you, you treat people with weight management and a, a lot more than that so let's, let's talk about when a patient first comes to you and they have a weight problem. How do you f initially start everything with them? Before they come in, they'll fill out an eight-page questionnaire, which will go over their dietary history, their health history, their medical history, and their behavioral history. When they come in, they go in the other room, they get an EKG, ultrasound body fat test, vital signs, and weight, obviously. And then they'll come in and we talk, and I ask them what they expect, what they want, and most importantly, why they failed in the past and what we're gonna do differently. We do order a battery of lab tests just to make sure that there's nothing hormonally wrong or otherwise biochemically wrong. It's very rarely the thyroid. Everyone wants it to be the thyroid. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to miss something like that. It would be embarrassing. I think a lot of women do that, don't they? They do. It's my thyroid. I have I have hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's not always the case, right? No. Interestingly, I do think that an underactive thyroid is underdiagnosed traditionally right. by right. traditional medicine. I do have a background in alternative medicine, and I think that low thyroid is more of an issue than a lot of people make it out to be, especially with traditional screening tests. So I do a little more of a detailed panel. We also know that fat cells can block the conversion of inactive thyroid hormone to active thyroid hormone, and that can not be picked up by traditional testing. Right, right. Now you also mentioned that you see patients of all ages, and how old are your youngest that, you, that come to you? I have an eight-year-old but I treat the family. Anyone that young, mm -hmm. really, it's about the parents. We know that age, at age three, a child's weight is less of an indicator of what they're gonna weigh as an adult than what their parents' weight is. So the eight-year-old, we talk mostly about habits and about what the family does, try and get them all in a healthier lifestyle. Um, now, what do you suggest as far as nutrition? When you're, after you do all the lab work and you do all the assessments, with nutrition because that's where it starts. Yes, We're absolutely. overeating, fast food. A lot of families are doing this. They're in a hurry. They're going from one place to the next, you know, going to the kids games, everything, and not making that time, not just taking that time to eat right. So, so in, what do you suggest to in, start with? In general, I make changes based on what the patients are doing already rather okay. than telling them to do something completely different. For example, to tell somebody who doesn't cook and doesn't have any time in the morning to make an egg white omelet with vegetables is not going to work for them. So when they come in the first week, I have them keep a very detailed nutrition log for the week. And then I can go back and make changes based on what they're doing already rather than saying, okay, this is what I want you to eat. And what happens is we'll make small changes over time so that in six months their lifestyle doesn't look anything like it did when they first came in, but they never see it happening. So I'll say something like, okay, instead of eating your Cheerios with sugar and whole milk for breakfast, let's use Special K Protein Plus and skim milk. One minor change. And then they come back in a week or two after that habit is ingrained and we make another little change. And there's an ideal world and there's the real world. And then in an ideal world, you make all your food from scratch, everything's organic, there's no pesticides. But in reality, that doesn't work for a lot of people, for people who have two jobs or kids. So we make do with, what's, with their lifestyle and we adapt the nutritional program to fit with their lifestyle rather than trying to make their lifestyle adapt to a nutrition program. And what are some of your greatest successes success stories with like how how much weight oh, in my, like my for favorite example. patient um, <laughs> the patient that I like to talk about not because he's had the most weight loss he hasn't but because when he came in he had diabetes mm -hmm. sleep apnea high cholesterol high blood pressure and after two and a half months he lost 10 inches off his waist 12 percent oh, body yeah. fat and his blood sugar fasting when he came in was 146, it went down to 87. His triglycerides on no medication were 250 something, and they went down to 46 or 47. Um, he dropped his total cholesterol, I think by almost 100 points. 
and his fasting insulin level went from 18, which is on the upper end of normal, down to 7, which is on the lower end of normal. But most importantly, he felt like he got his life back. He, he, he did get his life back, when, didn't he? When he came in, <laughs> it really I, I did. excited talking about him. When that he came great. in, he, looked, he just looked horrible. Yeah. His head down, shoulders down, just not a happy guy. He came in, he was 240, I think. He's at 186 or 187 now, working out 45 minutes a day with the intensity that most people couldn't even dream about. And loves it. Looks forward to his workouts. Looks forward to eating properly. Emails me all the time about different nutritional things that he's heard or read. And has really embraced the lifestyle. And that's what happens with my patients. We see the comorbid conditions associated with obesity either become minimalized or disappear with weight loss. Mm -hmm. and it's cool. So he added a lot of time back onto his life. Absolutely. We the goal here is to help people live longer right and, and because, healthier yes absolutely because most people are overweight and we know that if you're obese research shows you have a 50 to 100 percent chance of premature death the first thing i need to do is get the person down to a healthy weight and also with everything heart disease comes into play too in absolutely. this country heart disease is on the rise especially in women mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. so um do you, you have a lot of women patients too? I do. <laughs> female patients? I do. It actually, it turns out to be about a 50-50 mix. Okay. When we, the issue with heart disease in women is important because it tends to be underdiagnosed in the primary care setting. People don't think that women are going to be at risk at heart disease or for heart disease when in fact they are. And it's becoming more common now or the index of suspicion is raised which is a good thing, but it still needs to be treated very aggressively. And you mm -hmm. don't need to necessarily be very overweight to be at risk for heart disease. There are other factors that come into play. I think look. stress is a big factor, don't you feel? Stress, I mean, yeah, the, uh, I the life that we live yeah. every day it can be the stressful. The stressful lifestyle right. tends to raise cortisol levels, which I'm sure you've heard about. Mm -hmm. In and of itself, cortisol does not necessarily 100% cause weight gain, but it does cause an increase in appetite. And the fat that people do gain in a stressful environment tends to be deposited around the belly. And we are going to look at that on me. <laughs> so you measure the... Um the fat. Yeah, we uh, use, I use body fat testing. Body we fat do, testing. We okay. do weigh our patients. Because but you're looking at that abdominal area too, as you said, because that's a, a signal, a sign. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we do a couple things when people come in to look at their cardiovascular risk. We look at their waist to hip ratio. Mm -hmm. We look at their body fat. And the initial body fat analysis, we do a seven point test, which is on seven different points in the body, and one of them is the abdominal area. Um, and that gives us an idea about what's going on internally. And by fixing the body externally, we know that we're going to improve those parameters on the inside. But we do look at body fat. I prefer to look at body fat more than body mass index or weight, okay. because the distribution of someone's weight is a indicator of how healthy they are. Okay, so we're going to create a new profile. And then he's going to give me advice on what to do, how I should be eating, and maybe some exercises that I can be doing too. And then you can learn what you have to do. And then you have to come to Dr. Charlie too. If you need help, you have to come in. How tall are you? 5'6". I was always tall as 5'7". Somehow I lost an inch. I don't know how. I don't think I'm old enough to lose the inch. And how that? much do you weigh? Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, one. like about 110. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Go. Fortunately, it doesn't matter for the body fat testing what you. And the truth is really coming out. <laughs> okay. Hey, that sounds good to me. I hate scales. I hate scales. I've always hated scales. Do you hear that all the time? I, yes, absolutely. And I don't, I don't, I don't go like near a scale. It just bothers me. I joke with my patients, we have a very nice, very accurate body fat tester and an okay scale, because I don't care about the scale. I don't like scales. We see body composition changes that aren't adequately reflected in the scale, which is why we use the body fat testing machine. Okay, then I, I like that better then, okay. Okay, you're seeing it all today, folks. <laughs> All right, so on your one point body fat, let me get you 
off. You are 20.1% from there. 20.1, is yes. that good? Yeah, an average yeah. Uh, 20 to 25% is healthy for a woman. Oh, then I'm so right on target. Right on target. Then I must be eating okay you too. Must be doing I'm well. trying, I'm really trying. Okay, now we're going to talk about a little exercise and how to get in shape and how to just be healthy. Exercise is important. Everybody needs to exercise. In fact, as a point in weight management, we know that people who exercise keep the weight off significantly more than people who don't exercise. So we say that weight loss is a diet problem, weight maintenance is an exercise problem. And what would you recommend how many days a week? I think that a lot of it Some kind of exercise. It depends on how hard you're working out. Okay. The government recommends, I think, 60 to 90 minutes per day most days of the week. Now, they're talking about lower intensity activities. Right. So if you're medically able, I think that it makes more sense to exercise harder for a short period of time because I don't know a lot of people who have 90 minutes, six days a week to exercise. Well, don't you even... To would you recommend for some people that can't do the weights and all of that even to go outside and walk absolutely you know, to go for a walk every day Any 30 minutes absolutely right? anything is better than nothing and we know that even moderate bouts of walking are health are healthy they will extend your longevity that being said if you're medically able to exercise in an intense progressive fashion I recommend it I'm a personal trainer too and I know the benefits of intense exercise. So I try to get people into the mindset that there's no reason you can't do it. Just because you've never exercised before, just because you're not 23 anymore. Not what, you, What are you anybody. trying to say, huh? Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> there's no reason okay. that you can't get into a progressive intense exercise program. And we see right. people continually improve on their strength and their endurance and their agility up well into their 70s. And I see it all the time with my patients. And then you were just telling me, you have patients that are held 69, two, that are I, in great I, shape? I still have, I have time now. I still have time to train two patients slash clients. Uh, we work with three days a week and he just had to buy a pair of 85 pound dumbbells because he'd outgrown his 70 pound dumbbells, then his 75s and his 80s. Oh, man. And he's 69 and he's an animal and he's stronger and leaner than he's been in his entire life. When possible, I work with a number of personal trainers in the city and outside the city that I coordinate programs with for the people that can't afford it. If not, we go through. We say mm -hmm. every workout needs to be balanced. Every workout needs to be maintainable. I would never tell somebody to join a gym if they felt intimidated in the gym. So we will go either with a home workout, you can have people work out at their office, they can. Basically, we will tailor a program to anybody and anybody's needs. But I show people, these are exercises for chest. These are exercises for triceps, legs, abdomen, all through it. And we go through it on our first visit with our patient. And I will say, let's pick an exercise. And we'll read about it. And I will give them a link to a internet site that will give them a description further and we will construct an exercise program based on these motions. And we go through, we have this pair of five pound dumbbells over there, much, much less than anybody uh, would probably need. But it just shows them, we go through the range of motion to make okay. sure there's no joint issues or anything like that. And then we say, progress. Right. And most of my patients end up needing to buy new dumbbells for their home gym. A little bend in the elbows, all bend. the way up, hold it there for a count of two, nice and slow on the way down. Nice and slow. You feel that? And what muscles right. am I This is the targeting? side part of your shoulder, the side delt. Ooh, For shaky. The, yeah, right. <laughs> it's the medial delt. Your shoulder muscle is divided into three parts. The front part here, the side part here, and the back part. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. It's going to be in the middle part. Now you can bend your elbows a little bit. Now sometimes I like to do a little added cool. intensity technique just for you. Uh -huh. You're only going to go down about halfway. <laughs> like that? So I want you to stop, go down a little bit more. Okay, stop there, and then bring it up about three inches, then back down, Ooh. right to there. I keep doing <laughs> you that. can, you Just can feel that, that small more. range of motion there. Okay. So we're capturing here the most effective Ooh. part of this range of motion. You will feel a significant burn. You and feel like a burn. Be feeling the burn. <laughs> People in general set goals that are too low for themselves and they exist within perceived limits that are just that perceived. They're not really there. And we help people move past that and get into both physical and mental shape that they never thought was possible before. So it's all possible because it starts right here. Thank you so much, Charlie. Thanks for having me.
I love you, Heart of Philly.